So in a moment now, uh, Laura Cox is going to come up and, uh, and get the workshop process started um, with some introductions from some of the workshop people. Um, Laura has taken over this year from Bernie Folan in previous years, wrangled our, our workshops wonderfully, and Laura has very kindly taken this on this year, getting everybody organised for the, the workshops. Um, so once that's been introduced, uh, you're going to go off to your workshops. After that, there is a break you'll see in your timetable. That break is kindly sponsored by Elsevier. Thank you to them. Um, and then after the break, you'll come back here. But let me just um, uh, hand over to Laura now and get out of the way. Good morning. Um, could I ask my uh, five workshop facilitators to uh, come join me at the front, please? Um, before we just head out of the room, what we're going to do is each workshop is going to give a very, very brief overview of what they're about so that we can tie this up with uh, the feedback session at the end. generally line up. <laughs> okay, we'll do them in order. Um, so uh, we should have some slides as well which give you which room we should be in for each workshop. Um, oh, is it me? Okay. Those are the workshops and they are in those rooms. Okay, um, so if I could just ask uh, Leslie Thompson from Elsevier to give us a quick look at workshop A, Open Science Responsibilities. Hi, so I'm Leslie and I'm from Elsevier and I'm working with Clive today to try and put forward this workshop on open science. First thing I should say is I have never been a publisher. I spent 26 years in UK research fund councils and I also was a researcher. So actually some of the things we've heard today are very relevant. I hope in our workshop we'll provide a safe space for anybody who's interested in open science to think about what it means for your role as a publisher, your role as a researcher, your role as a librarian, or your role as a funder. Now I've got the slides, but I'm just gonna keep talking. The whole purpose of the workshop is to provide a space for people to think and to together work through some of the issues. We've already heard Open comes with costs, and those costs can be to individuals, they can be changes to people's ways of working. And how collectively do we think about what the future of open science means, and how we all have to adjust or think about our behaviours, and the things that we do today that in an open world, where there's more transparency, where there's more availability of information, we can help researchers collectively move forward to a more exciting prospect. And I think in the outside world today where the weather's hostile, where in the UK we have a government that certainly has certain issues with universities, this should find a space where we can cling together and think about the future and make it better than maybe where it would be if we weren't working together to try and design a future open research world. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie. Um, now I'd like to introduce Phil Jones from Digital Science, who's going to talk about resilience through diversity. Hi. Uh, so I feel like um, our workshop doesn't really need to be pitched. We've already been advertised twice during the, during the morning session so far. Um, I'm working with Nancy Roberts of Business Inclusivity, and we're going to be doing a panel, I beg your pardon, a workshop on diversity. Um, and particularly, what we want to try to focus on is why certain communities, why certain people perhaps don't feel as welcome in our industry or in our workplace as they might, what causes them to be reluctant to, uh, to join our industry, perhaps why they don't see um, us as a career opportunity or are completely unaware of us, perhaps even. And, and how we can build a workshop, how we can build, beg your pardon, an environment, how we can build a, uh, a company that is, is welcoming and actively welcoming um, for absolutely everybody. Now, I want to just have a note of reassurance here. 
Um, as you know, there's going to be videographers in many of the workshops and, and sessions. Due to the sensitive nature of what we're talking about in the, in the uh, inclusivity workshop, we're not going to have videographers there. So what people are saying and how they, and how they express themselves and the concerns and fears and worries that they have, they won't be recorded. So that's, we've talked about safe spaces already, that I hope will allow us to kind of explore some of the more complex and some of the more difficult issues and allow people to, uh, to express what they, how they feel about them. So uh, thanks very much. Thanks, Phil. Um, okay, and for workshop C on open data sharing, uh, Robertson Moores from the Belmont Forum. Good morning. So the uh, open data sharing uh, workshop is an opportunity for you to help us shape the future. We are trying to, uh, working the Belmont Forum as a consortium of national science funding agencies, and we're engaged in a project with the science publishing community to uh, basically harmonize the kinds of direction if not requirements that researchers uh, need to meet in the future about open data sharing, coming both from the funder's side and from the publisher's side and sending the same message. So we developed the beginnings of a framework of what that um, uh, policy and messaging should look like, uh, focusing on uh, data accessibility statements as a starting point, and we really are looking for your very direct input uh, and we're going to take this to RDA and then over the course of the summer work with the Belmont Forum agencies and science publishers to come up with a final policy uh, that we can um, share at the uh, science data conference in uh, the fall and this would become uh, requirements language that would be included in all future Belmont Forum uh, grant uh, proposals. So we uh, encourage you to come and join and as I say help shape the future. Thank you. Thanks, Robert. And for workshop D on metadata life cycles, we have Ginny Hendricks and Crossref. Thank you. Yes, I'm working with Ross Mounts uh, from Arcadia Fund, who told me just before I came up that metadata sells itself. Um, <laughs> Uh, I find that if you use the word metadata, it tends to attract technical and operational people. However, um, we'd like to move the conversation on um, so that uh, metadata is recognized as a method of communication between the different community groups. Um, it's what researchers use to tell the story about their work when they're submitting manuscripts, it's what publishers use to uh, share the information with each other and with readers, it's what libraries and discovery platforms use to tell this story and make the research discoverable. So if you care about research communications, um, let's have a conversation across the broad sectors of our industry about how we can improve, fill in the gaps, understand uh, why there are gaps, what the barriers are, address the elephants in the room, and educate ourselves about how we can do better. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ginny. And finally, for workshop E on open access communications, we have Liz Ferguson from Wiley. Thank you. So, together with Katrina McCullum, down here in the front from Hindawi, and Valerie McCutcheon from the University of Glasgow, uh, we have put together a workshop on open access communication stemming from our work in the university's UK Open Access Efficiencies Working Group, subgroup communications. Um, our role in that group is to identify inefficiencies in the processes and workflows that deliver open access, um, particularly in the UK, but this does have wider implications for sure, and to identify solutions that may make the implementation of open access policies and workflows much simpler for researchers and all of us who try to work with them. So we came up with two critical areas within that group, one of which is permanent identifiers or metadata on steroids perhaps, and the second of which is communications. We are finding that researchers are still confused about some very simple terms to most of us in this room at least, green and gold for example. Not a huge surprise, funders still have a wide variety of mandates and policies which contain some very subtle differences. Publishers and journals then allow people to comply with those in quite variable ways, and institutions again provide variable levels of support financially and otherwise to researchers, so it's no wonder that they're confused. 
We have run a workshop via Valerie at this meeting last year. We've had a two-day Universities UK workshop. We've explored these issues at Force 11 at, and at Pidapalooza, and we still have not resolved them. So we are looking for people to come and join us who share our mission to make understanding and implementing open access workflows much simpler and easier for researchers, and again, all of those who support us. So if you have experience, opinion, or just a point of view that you'd like to come and share, come and help us. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Okay, just before we head out, and we are literally going to head out in a second, um, as you may know, some of you were, uh, were able to uh, express a preference in which workshop you were going to attend in advance. Um, not everybody has, has been able to do that. Um, I would ask that when you, if you didn't pre-select a workshop, when you're heading off to, to whichever one you fancy, could you um, bear in mind the numbers in the room? We've, uh, we've been trying to keep, keep this so that we've got a, a balance in both numbers and backgrounds between people. Um, so if you, uh, if you find it's a bit full, please go to another one rather than ousting someone. Many thanks and enjoy.